who I am? No, you shouldn't. You've never seen me. You've never talked to me. Until now, you never knew I existed. You're probably wondering where you are. Well, that's not an easy answer. Are you scared? I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is you do have a reason to fear if you don't cooperate. But with that being said, that is also the good news. If you cooperate with me, and everybody else that brought you here, you will be in no danger whatsoever. So, are you still afraid? That's understandable. Do you have any idea why you might be here? Well, let's just start at the beginning. What's your name? Don't lie to me. We could do this the easy way, or we could do this the hard way. Let's just say I know more about you than you think I do. So every time you lie, I will know about it. So instead of playing head games, let's just get to the point. What is your name? That is correct. How old are you? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. If you start telling the truth like that, you're on the way to freedom. So, do you have any idea why? I might have brought you here. Well, I figured that much. You wouldn't know anything. You're probably still wondering, is this a dream? Is everything I'm saying or everything I'm about to say true. Well, I assure you, it is real. If it was a dream, wouldn't I be able to scare you out of it? as real as it can be. My name, well, it's probably better if you don't know my name. Just in case you decide to try to escape, which by the way, won't happen. It's still just better if you don't know or ask any questions, so you're not getting my name. Your 
a lot older than the last time I saw you. That's right. I told you, I know everything there is to know about you. I know just as much about you as you know about yourself. So, let's start with where we are. Obviously, we're not someplace you have ever been before. We are in a dungeon. An actual dungeon, not just a made-up dungeon. We are in a prison right now. In the basement. There is nobody around that can save you. There is nobody around that you can scream for help for. The only people around at this point in time you are oh and if you were to somehow see outside of this prison again you might meet some of my friends the friends that brought you here I'm known as the interrogator. I don't kidnap people, per se. I only ask them the questions that need to be asked, get the information that needs to be gotten. You have information that needs to be gotten. And I will get it from you. I guess I owe it to you to at least tell you what's going on. How are your parents doing? Quite wealthy, aren't they? a father that's 36 years old and a mother that's 34. I know you might be wondering, how would I know such a thing? But we'll get there. I need to see your face a little bit better. Don't worry. I won't burn you with a candle. That's what this is for. I know it's a little hard to relax in a situation like this, but I assure you, if you cooperate, I won't touch you. Now, 10 years ago, Ten long years ago. I know you were young. I know how unfair it is for you to get tangled up in such a mess that you were barely born for. But as young as you were, you are still the bargaining chip that we need to get what we want back. You that's right. You're being held as two things, really. A source of information for us, and when we get that information, you are also the ransom we need to get back what was taken from us all those years ago. Ten years ago, I had a briefcase 
this briefcase was full of just more riches than you can ever imagine. Oh wait, that's right. You can imagine the riches because you've lived with them. I never got to see my own riches, the money I earned. Because your family took it from me. This bag was full of 20 million dollars. And I know what you're thinking. How could a man like me wind up with 20 million dollars? Well, you see. Smuggling illegal objects over the border pays quite a bit because it is a very risky operation. Now, I'm not talking drugs. I'm talking any item somebody needs. If that item needs to get over the border, I'm the guy. I will bring whatever you need, no matter how big, no matter how small, to you. I am a master of my work. So are all my my friends. Now only one person, one soul, has ever seen me in the act of smuggling. I had a particular particularly a uh, big shipment, uh, a big thing to take over the border. 25 illegal weapons, mind you. Now, these weapons totaled what I believe to be $20 million or more. The guns... <clears throat> They made it where they had to go. They made it to who wanted them. But the briefcase didn't make it back. The briefcase contained the $20 million that was our payment for bringing those guns to the customer. Now, at first we thought it was a mistake, but we're not sloppy. Oh, we're not sloppy at all. So we realized somebody must have seen something. Your father. Your father somehow managed to gain enough suspicion to follow the seller to the customer, witness this exchange take place. He was at the wrong place the wrong time. Ten years later, he still doesn't know that, but he will. After the exchange was made, the briefcase only had to make it through a security check at the airport and be sent back here. Twenty million dollars. When I opened that briefcase, I found nothing. But twenty rolls of toilet paper. When the bag was going through security check, your father sneakily switched up his bag with mine. They 
both looked very similar, so nobody asked any questions. No suspicions were aroused. Now you would think he would go with, to the police with this bag, but out of fear, out of, out of the coward that your father is, he knew what he would come for. He knew the police would somehow be a bad idea because we would find him. So he decided to take the money for himself. You, your mother, your father, he saw you all leaving the airport that day with a bag that looked an awfully lot like mine. He didn't think about it until I got home to open the briefcase. I didn't know what your father had pulled until it was too late. I spent 10 years looking. It's a shame, really. I'm rich now. All I'm looking for is revenge. But don't fear, you were too young to know what was happening. So I'm not going to hurt you. Unless, of course, you decide to do something stupid. Your father outsmarted us again. Although we obtained you, somehow he caught wind of us finding him. He escaped before we even had a chance to grab him. And your mother. You know where they would go in an emergency. You know exactly where they would go, so I need to know. Where are your parents? I'm not an unreasonable man, but what I can tell you is you're treading a thin line between helping me and getting hurt. to not tell me the information that I need especially when you know what will happen now it's very uh, admirable because I know you're just trying to protect your parents do not worry we won't kill them we won't even hurt them we're just going to make sure they never have a happy life again. We're going to take their money. We're going to take everything you've ever had. But if for some reason we find them before you help us, if we find them without your help, we might just have to up the ante a bit, if you know what I'm saying. So, I'm going to ask again, where are your parents? Thank you.
give me one second. I have to tell my crew. She says, there's a panic room behind the bookshelf. In that old house. That's where you go in emergency. Find that. This cell phone is the key to your freedom. If for some reason this cell phone rings and gives me information that doesn't align with the information you gave me, there's going to be some serious problems. Candles are beautiful in the dark, aren't they? What would you like to do to pass time? I already had a crew member stationed at your old house just in case they were there, so this should not take too long. I'm sorry, you got tangled up in all this. But you have to understand why it had to happen. Okay, here we go. Hello? Yes, I understand. Okay. Put him on the phone. Hi. You remember me, don't you? I'm sure you've already been filled in on who we are. No? Well, I shouldn't have to say too much other than ten years ago you stole something from me. A briefcase from an airport. Ah, uh, that rings a bell, doesn't it? Well, oh, you won't, you're never going to give it back. All the money's yours. Well, I beg to differ. Give me a second to show you why. Say hello to your father. I promise I will not hurt her or him. <laughs> but if I have to, I will. I will have the money transported into this bank account that I'm about to tell you within the next five minutes or I'm going to have to hurt your child. Five minutes to put 
20 million dollars in this bank account two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirty two and a half Five minutes. Let's see if your father can come through. He says he doesn't have the money. <laughs> I beg to differ. Has your father or mother ever explained to you how you guys came into so much wealth, or is this the first you're hearing from it? This is the first time? That's a shame. Well, I guess as long as we're here, you might as well have a drink. You're not old enough? It's okay. I can enjoy one by myself. Straight whiskey. The best. <sighs> on second thought. person you are. Did you send the money? All right. Congratulations. You will see your daughter again. I'm almost going to be bored now that I don't have to search for you and your family anymore. I told you, I'm a man of my word. You are now free to go. Just sit tight and I'll have somebody here in a matter of moments to walk you out. Goodbye. 